Good morning, everybody. My name is Constable Danny McKinnon, Public Information Officer with the Winnipeg City Police. I'm here to present one matter today, which will be uh, discussed by Inspector Elton Hall of the Organized Crime Division. And this is in regards to a 3D gun investigation. Inspector? Good morning. Um, so just before we get started, I'll give a brief overview of uh, the investigation. It's a continuing investigation, so it'll be brief. And then I think it's a good time to open up a discussion about uh, some of the proposed amendments to Bill C-21 because it does affect 3D printing. So uh, I've had some um, inquiries from the media about it, so this might be a good time to actually talk about it. So I'll just get started. <clears throat> in January of 2023, Canada Border Services Agency indicated that disguised shipments from the United States and China were detected entering into Canada, destined for addresses in Winnipeg. The Winnipeg Police Firearms Investigation and Enforcement Unit, or FIU for short, was consulted and entered into an investigation. It was determined that gun parts traditionally used to com complete 3D printed firearms were being shipped via couriers, disguised as tools and machining equipment. Police used covert methods of delivery and tracking to determine destinations and possible delivery locations. As a result, FIU was successful in identifying an address on Boyd Avenue as a final destination for these items. FIU determined that an individual or individuals were manufacturing and trafficking, trafficking firearms from this location. On March 31st, the Tactical Support Unit and FIU executed a search warrant in a 300 block of Boyd Avenue, arresting an 18-year-old male identified as Jackson Prince. Now, some of the items here you'll see. Uh, police seized 20 3D printed Glock style lower receivers, one 3D printed AR-15 style firearm, approximately 100 auto sears, many of these are 3D printed, three 3D printed magazines, one 3D printed drum magazine, a Glock style slide, which appears to have been used on some of the receivers you see here today. And I'll talk about that a little bit, why that's important. One Type 81 rifle and prohibited magazine, and one Ender Pro Plus 3D printer with numerous filaments. The receivers displayed here are durable and made to last. The filament is of good quality and the receivers are made with identifying markers, which are, in my opinion, used as marketing ploys. One of these identifying markers is a Gucci logo located on a hand grip of some of the receivers. Now, as I mentioned, this is a continuing investigation. Anybody with information regarding 3D printed guns that are blue and orange in color, or 3D printed guns with Gucci logos are asked to call the Firearms Investigation and Enforcement Unit directly at 986-3258. Anybody with information regarding 3D printing, manufacturing or trafficking of firearms is asked to call the Firearms Investigation Unit or call Crime Stoppers at 786-TIPS. Um, and just before I do a Q&A, we have uh, printed th uh, 3D receivers that we've printed with the ATF and we've printed here in-house for training. At the end of it, if you want to uh, feel them, touch them and get a feel for how, how they're made and how strong they are, you can. Dan, do you mind just passing me an orange one? So I'm good for a Q&A when you guys are available. Thanks. Is it the biggest uh, seizure of uh, 3D stuff in Winnipeg? Um, it'll be up there with one of our biggest seizures, yeah. Just last year, there was 13 firearms that were seized? A couple of years ago, yeah. Yeah. And then I know when uh, the previous inspector was here, he had a fairly big one as well. So what the issue with... Uh, can you tell us more about the fact that when we print receiver, then it's, I guess it's legal to buy uh, other firearm stuff, uh, stuff part? Right, so, uh, and this goes into the proposed amendments, which we can talk about, but the actual plastic receiver, although it says in a criminal code that receivers are a controlled item, these aren't actual gun parts right now because they're printed. That refers to real receivers made from real manufacturing companies. So these right now aren't a controlled item. Uh, I brought up the slide, uh, gun barrels, 
things of that nature. Right now, there's no controls on them. They're uh, they're fully legal. They can be moved around as parts. So I was saying before, actually last summer, that I'd like to see some controls on those because really what we're seeing, you can have a fully functioning handgun. You can take it apart and have it in your pocket or in other places and bring it down the street, and it's not a firearm anymore. So safe to say you want those controls. Absolutely, yeah. Um, investigation continuing. I mean, this one accused, do you believe he was acting at least somewhat alone as, as his own cell? Member? Yeah, I do. I think he uh, he has his contacts in the community, obviously, where he can likely dump these firearms off, but I would say he was acting alone in printing and trafficking. What about uh, the, the, the purring the, the parts into the, into the country? I mean, is he working with contacts or is he part of the public organization there? Yeah, that's a good question. I'll leave that to the investigators, but I know... Uh, you know, not all of these items are going right to his house, and I wouldn't say he was um, trying to uh, be deceitful with police. I think he just doesn't want 20 packages coming to his house at once, so he's maybe sending them to other locations, and the packages are coming to his uh, address. You may not know, but I mean, largely, who, who are buying these guns? Are these more organized criminals, or is it kind of just anyone who has the pack? Uh, no, my... Uh, there's a small percentage of people in Winnipeg that need illegal guns, crime guns, 3D printed guns, and they're generally people in gangs or drug networks, organized crime figures. Uh, very rarely, if ever, you're going to see people like us going onto the street to spend thousands of dollars on a 3D printed gun. So these are crime guns. They're defined as crime guns right now once they're assembled, and they're going to the criminal element in Winnipeg. So what do you ask the government now? What do you want to... Well, I'm not asking. So my understanding uh, in, in looking at they made some uh, proposed amendments a couple of days ago. It was just released. Uh, there's a lot of amendments, but what I'm going to focus on are crime guns and what you see here. And so what they're asking, and I fully agree with it right now, is these plastic receivers that you see, they're looking to prohibit these. So I don't know what the, uh, the way it's going to be written up or what it's going to look like, but you're not going to stop people from printing them, but what you can do is prohibit the movement, the transferring, the selling, the trading, uh, the trafficking of these guns, so, um, or these receivers, sorry. So I'm in full support of that, like most police agencies, if all police agencies are. And my understanding is they're looking now at putting controls on the gun slides, the gun barrels, and the gun... Um, uh, tracking systems that go into here so uh, again that's something we need controls because really you can just ship these walk with these do whatever you want they're not illegal right now as a separate part so we need some sort of control to prevent the manufacturing uh, assembly and then trafficking of these guns and right now that's what they're proposing and that's what the proposal is and I fully support it as a taxpayer in Winnipeg as a civilian and as a police officer so we're now on a crime with uh, the 3D gun or ghost gun how hard is it to retrace it or to retrace? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen uh, articles on this. I should be clear for any of the criminals watching. We can track 3D printed guns. Uh, we, our FIAS uh, unit, our firearms analysis section, is uh, cutting edge in Canada right now. We spend a lot of money on this, and a lot of training goes into it, so we can track 3D guns. I want to be clear on that. So we had two charges of weapons trafficking. I mean safe to say police believe he at, at, their, at the very least sold the guns at, at two different two different times I mean, there's, there, that was caught in the investigation so to speak okay <laughs> I, I don't want to I, I can't I see it way right now yeah yeah the there's there's two trafficking charges here we believe we can prove the charge of trafficking firearms um, that's for disclosure right now but um, uh, this area is very gray in Canada right now and we always see, as you know, we already had somebody convicted in court uh, for this uh, similar offense. It's gray. We're the first in Canada doing this, so um, it's a gray area. I don't want to really talk on behalf of the Crown Attorney pr uh, prosecuting this because, like I said, although the criminal code says these are prohibited, plastic ones aren't. So for police, we have to prove the fact that they're actually assembling these guns and trafficking them, and we believe we can do that. And I'll point out here, uh, this is why it's important to have controls on some of these. This individual has one slide on the table uh, that does not have serial numbers on it. 
and we believe we can prove that that slide's been used on some of these guns. So he's assembling guns, using the slide to make sure it works, and then having that uh, assembled part go into the public. And there's a red firearm right there. You can see we've actually added all the, uh, he's added all the uh, uh, slides and the um, uh, gear right into the gun to make it functioning. You might not know Guns, guns, blue guns. Is, do you have any idea why he's manufacturing them in, in different colors as opposed to black? Uh, you know, I, I think part of it's just a marketing ploy. He has uh, different designs on his guns. Um, like I said, there's, I say Gucci for a reason. We believe there's a bunch of Gucci guns on the street right now. So if anyone has information on that, they can uh, contact the firearms unit immediately. Um, Pink gun, maybe it's for girls. Blue for I, I don't know. It's it's a marketing ploy as well. There's different filaments. So when I say filaments, the plastics you see here, uh, there might be different grades. So maybe a different grade's a different color as well. So you might just be doing different grades. I should point out one thing: the AR-15 style uh, 3D printing gun you see in front of me. Approximately two and a half weeks ago, the Chicago police put out a, a warning that in Chicago, they're seeing an influx of those guns as well. So I'm not suggesting this individual is trafficking it there. I'm just saying. The print is out, and so uh, that gun resembles a Nerf gun. And when you go online, you can look at Nerf guns, and actually very identical. So it's very problematic uh, for policing, for officer safety, for public safety. I mean, why why is that? You know, an issue to have a, a functioning firearm that looks so much like a, a toy. Why? Well, I, I mean, uh, from an officer safety perspective, if you're going to a firearms call and a a young young man or young girls coming around a corner with one of these firearms, the first reaction from police is going to be, well, it's a toy gun. And then before you know it, you have a, a, a situation uh, starting as well for public safety. I mean, how are parents, teachers, law enforcement, reporters, anybody supposed to know what's real and what's not anymore? So it's very problematic. And, and so getting back to these proposed amendments from the government, I fully support having controls on this. Not only is it going to uh, potentially slow down uh, trafficking of these 3D printed guns, but in my opinion, uh, and I look at this from a, a more of a global perspective, I think it's going to drive the price up on these guns, and so it's going to make it unaffordable for a lot of uh, maybe lower level gang members to buy. Right now, legitimate, real handguns from the United States that are trafficking around $5,000. You can make these firearms as one and done guns or throwaway guns and they're very cheap. And so that's, we, we want to prevent that from happening. Uh, on a side note, the guns you see here are actually, uh, I'm not going to give the price, but no one in this room, including myself, would be buying them. They're actually fairly expensive, so. But I'm asking that $5,000 mark. Yeah, yeah. Just to understand, like, the, 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 the gun that looks like a, a toy right now, like, yeah. the, the big one, like, is there a missing part for it to, to be functional? They're base, it's basically two parts, Shy, You have a, a firing mechanism that has to go in there and then the, the gun barrel, essentially. And then you have a functioning AR-15. But will that be easy to buy? Will yeah, there's no controls on any of those parts right now, so you can just ship them in from China, the United States, somewhere in Canada. My experience uh, in Canada is obviously we're not like some of these other countries where it's just a free-for-all. There's um, controls in place and a lot of gun dealerships won't be selling these here it's very hard you'll get a couple but everyone knows what's at risk if you get caught selling even though they're not illegal they know what's at risk if uh, they're helping uh, establish a trafficking ring with 3d printed so a lot of these parts are coming from china and the united states right now and I, I mean, police have seen these these guns are pretty great guns used in shootings in the past mm -hmm. right? I mean, just, yep can you speak yep about that? yep uh, yeah, so uh, what can I tell you? So last year, for example, we seized 14 3D printed guns in the city. And this year, we're already at 23. And I believe we just seized two more, maybe at 25 for this week. And we're not even halfway through the year yet. And I can't even tell you for sure if we've included some of these receivers into that stat. So we've seen a real big influx in 3D printed guns in the city in the last two years, especially in the last four months. My quarter one numbers for um, shootings in a city right now and gun violence is higher than it's been in any other quarter one before. So we're seeing an influx. 
in saying that, to kind of answer your question, I've seen a, you know, I can't confirm these numbers because they're new, but in August or in uh, April, I see a decline in some of the gun shootings and violence in the city. So maybe this has something to do with it. Like maybe we've uh, arrested the right individual, but this is a clear problem for policing in Canada. And right now in Winnipeg, it's, we've moved from um, a city that has uh, long barrels and sawed off shotguns into a city now that's a handgun city. And uh, I can prove that with a, a statistic last year, even though we did well in bringing gun violence down last year, and we have some really good numbers, one stat that really bothered me was our handgun seizures, our crime gun handguns were higher than any other crime gun in the city. So it's the first time in our history as a police service we've seized more, we've seized more crime gun handguns than we have shotguns or sawed off shotguns. So we've clearly, clearly moved in from that one room into this new room of uh, handguns being an issue here. When you see that, are you worried that uh, the street might have more of those? Yeah, so my release here is really, it's, uh, um, you know, it doesn't give you a lot of information. I'm being pretty clear. If anyone sees guns that have the uh, Gucci logos or they're orange and, and blue, and I think there's more on the street we want to know right away. Um, we believe there's a lot on the street right now. We need to get as many off the street as we can. And like I said, these aren't, in my opinion, these aren't throwaway guns. They're, they're fairly well made, so they're made to last. Could you get us those, those numbers on, on shootings um, So I wanna, it's not before the police board yet. Uh, this should be in the next couple of weeks. I, the numbers I can give you right now is uh, we've seized 186 crime guns in the first quarter, which is one of the highest Q1 numbers we've had since I've been here and we've ever had. A low number of handguns, ironically, but I'm seeing an influx in handguns in April, but shootings are going down in April. So there could just be a delay in how the seizures are, seizures are going in that regard. Um, the number I can give you is we've seized 141 handguns last year that are crime guns compared to 121 shotguns or sawed-off shotguns that are crime guns. So well, that... That's a mix. That's a total of handguns uh, seized in the city last year. Yeah, my CBC colleague got the data uh, and generally from you guys saying that there were 13 only. Uh, There's 14 3Ds. 14. So those 14 3Ds will be in, may be included okay. in, in that 141. But you have to remember, uh, if it's just a receiver, they may not be putting it. That 141 may actually be like actual functioning handguns. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm just thinking these proposed amendments. I just want to be clear um, for the media, uh, again, like if the proposal is to prohibit 3D printed receivers, I want to be very clear that we support that. I'm asking for it. We've been asking for it for a while. We need it. Uh, you'll, you'll help law enforcement cut down on the trafficking of 3D printed guns. And then having controls on the gun rails, the gun slides and the barrels uh, is something we're asking for as well. It sounds like they're going to put controls on that. So great if they are please do it. And I actually also, I'm not sure if the government can do this, but to see the serialization, so serializing uh, slides and barrels would also help. That might be a little tougher ask, but controlling them right now in our criminal code would make it easier for the crowns and way easier for law enforcement. That's it. Thank you. Thanks. Merci. Feel free, there's um, 3D guns here. The orange ones have, we've registered them. There's serial numbers on there, so don't take them. The other three were just made um, by our FIAS unit for training purposes, and the black one already has the gun rails inside of it, so that's what an actual gun would look like. Thank you. 
vous comprendrez, par exemple, si ils sont là, et en même temps, ils sont là, 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 ils sont